Hi, and uh, welcome to the first part of a Tier 2 The Shattering Events Editor tutorial. So, in this series of tutorials, I'm going to try to show you some of the basics of how to create your own uh, events, your own quests. So, uh, I'm actually working from the Unity Editor, but this will look exactly the same uh, in your game. So, the first step is to click on the events editor and then you will see the least list of existing modules so your list will probably not have all these x uh, debug stuff these are the ones that uh, i don't let into the game so when i'm working on the quests and i don't want them going into the game they're not ready yet or they've been abandoned or whatever that's that's where they sleep so to create a new module, you click on the nice green cross and you name your new module. So I'm going to do this one as X uh, debug tutorial videos. So we've created our new module. This is where it popped up. So what we could do with it is we could clone the entire module, we can rename it, we can import and export text files. So this is very useful for localization, uh, proofreading and so on. And I will show you that option later on in the tutorials. You can also test a module and that will show you some of the basic mistakes you might have made. Uh, I will also show that function later. But for now we will begin with just a very, very quick and simple event just to get us started. So we click on edit module to enter into our freshly created module and here we create the events. So once again we press the green cross to create our event. Uh, we will call this uh, magical rain. Right so we've got our magical rain there. Once again if we select it, we could clone the entire event, we could clone the event into another module and we can rename the event and we can also save our work. This is a very important button and we can delete the event. Okay, so we're going to press the edit event and go into it. So adventure start node, this is our very basic node that uh, begins every event that you will design so it's really important over here you decide what type of event you're making so an interrupt event is one that interrupts movement the expedition event is uh, for groups that are outside the village walking around on the map village events are for the village uh, generic events are global and are triggered for uh, not for any specific group but just triggered in game and they're checked for every turn and group generic events are similar to the generic also tested for every turn but you can actually use a particular group they, they are tested for every group on the, on the map rather than just uh, generally in game uh, so things like uh, the childbirth events and things like that are group generic ones so uh, the event we're going to make today is just uh, going to be some weird magical rain coming down at us. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it an expedition and village. So it could happen in either expedition or village. And we are going to make it an interrupt event as well. So it can interrupt your journey. And we're going to set it to difficulty one. You can uh, use a scale of one to ten. And this will determine when your event can start spawning, but also when they stop. So depending on the biome that you're in, uh, some of the easier events will not occur. We can set an image. So for this one, let's just use this nice rainy day here. But yeah, you can uh, check all of the event artwork we have and choose whatever is available. So we've got our image. Now, I'm going to set this event as being usable only once, so it can only appear once in a game. If I want it to be a sea event, then I'd tick this and it would not happen on land. 
Uh, this drop down menu doesn't actually work. Um, so initially we were going to have biomes selected here, but we now do that through the logic editor. So this one won't work. Uh, this drop down menu is for um, the logbook, which I will come to in another video. But if you do want your events to appear in the logbook, this is when you set the tag that will tell the system that that's what you wanted to do. So event participation is you can force everyone to join a particular event. Um, and if you've played Thea 2 before, you will know that most of our events are uh, triggered in a movement area. So any character within six hexes of the person that has triggered the event the group that's triggered the event can take part in it so uh, but you could make it say same island or you could make it even the whole world there are a couple of events especially in the in the divine or the main quest that will trigger for everyone on the whole map but uh, this one will be a typical movement area event and then again on the own is if you needed it to, to be for just the one player not for every player. This is particularly important for multiplayer games. And you play, uh, and you set it to ally, ally to allow inviting other groups. Right, so movement area, ally, ally is the standard for the majority of events. So if you wanted any other prerequisites for your event, you do it through enter the logic editor here. A uh, couple of important things to note. If you are creating any groups, so let us say that you create a list of just characters, so all players, all group of characters. Um, that will search for all the people in this group. And let's say you wanted it to be, for this particular event, you want at least two people. So list size more or equal than two so this will check if there are at least two people in the group that has triggered this event and only then will it be allowed to uh, to happen um, however uh, try not to use the groups uh, that you create in the filters or processing in this particular node uh, later on in the event as it can crash so I'll, I'll come to more advanced options in this in, in another video, but that's just some basic advice there. Right, so we have the prerequisites and other prerequisites, of course, could be things like the terrain you're on. So uh, let's say that this event will only trigger next to a lake. So if your village is by a lake or your group is traveling by a lake, then that's when this event has a chance to trigger. So it needs two people, it needs to be by a lake. So these would be your prerequisites. And so these are all the criteria that we've set for this particular event to happen. So now to move forwards, you add a new output and you right click anywhere on the field here. And this little menu comes up. So these are your building blocks for all of your events. So the basic building block that we're going to work with for this short video is the adventure node. And this is the most used node, except for the end node. This is where your text goes. So this is where your main adventure happens. So in this one, we will say um, odd magical rain falls on you. And that's it, because we want to keep it simple. Now, uh, just for the purpose of, of demonstrating a simple event, I'm not going to add any additional options to this one. So it's, it's simply telling you this, this is what's happened. Uh, so we're going to say, try to stay sheltered and wait for it to pass. That's going to be our option. And uh, let's say this odd magical uh, rain will actually 
deal some spiritual damage because well we want every event to do something don't we so we've selected a deal damage node from the menu again you right click to uh, show the menu and that was the deal damage node right click again to get rid of it or if you click on anything else it will disappear uh, so yeah we connect our nodes with the little strings so then uh, if you we need to ever move them around or anything they, they still stay attached so the deal damage node uh, we have three types of damage we've got mental physical and spirit damage and we have a minimum and maximum damage and we can set the damage as percent so for example if we do a 20 to 30 and set it to the percent then it adds then it um, deals 20 to 30 percent damage if we didn't do the tick then it would deal 20 to 30 damage so it's uh, important to remember which one you want to do this one will do spirit damage so now what we want to do is we want a particular group of people uh, to be dealt this damage. So at the moment we don't have anything yet on the list. So what we'll do is we'll enter the logic editor in the previous node because what I find is a good practice is to create all of your um, groups in the second adventure node to make sure they're available in all the different branches that you will eventually make. So I'll go into the second adventure node, I'll go into enter logic editor and in the filters I will create once again the people group. So all players, all group of characters select all the characters that are active in this particular event. Now the unsafe all players, all group of characters, that which check for all the um, all the characters even outside of this event so we don't tend to use that unless we only need to check for example if you if anyone from the players has a certain character or so on but we will get into that advanced option later on in the videos for now we use all players all group of characters I always use this shortcut for people and then I make this group public which means it will appear in all the nodes that I make from now on. So if I go outside, I now have the deal damage node. I can select the people that I created. So now all the characters that are taking part in this event are damaged by this magical rain. They get 20 to 30 damage. So I right click again to select the adventure end you must select the adventure end node at the end of every event otherwise it will crash so this is the very basic structure of a really really simple event uh, over here you'll add the experience for all players so let's say i'm going to give two experience and we're going to do one research po research point now this is actually a scale of research points and experience points not the actual number so again the scale is one to ten and the scale then is uh, determined by other people on the team um, but that just gives you as a quest designer an idea of how much of how, how little you want to give uh, if for some reason you wanted to give experience for just the player that's triggered the event or something like that, you could uh, try these. I've, I've actually not used them. They've kind of become redundant. I think we had uh, a reason for creating those initially, but then we, we just never used it. Um, and again, in another video, I will go into the navigate to another adventure and the other options that we have here. But for now, we have created very basic uh, first event. So I hope this is helpful and I see you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Oh, and do remember to save your work. So yes, we click on save before we exit. We go back to events and then if we go back to modules. What I often prefer to do is exit and save just to be sure. So I will come up with this window I'll do a save and exit and then I really know that my work is safe so yes thank you very much for watching and listening 
see you in the next video. Bye!